Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jana. I'm one of the registered nurses. I do create a lot of content for you guys. It's all about nursing, my experience since I was a nursing student and up until today. At the moment, I work for Queensland Health in a general medicine ward. In today's video, I want to talk about priming the line and how to eliminate the bubbles in a line. Actually, this video was given to me as a hint and as an idea by one of the subscribers. They have asked me if I can do more practical instructional videos but because i don't have a lot of materials to work with and they are expensive if i go and buy it by myself because it's all like a nursing slash medical items they're not cheap and also i can't take them from the ward to show you it is a little bit hand tighten situation for me but for the sake of this video i've got two items from my ward um, and i have asked permission from my tl if i can use it so i've got a standard iv line guys to use here um, they were happy for me to take this one for the purpose of this video and also i've got a bag of sodium chloride 100 mils this one was opened from its original cover but left unused so it's all sealed here and my TL was happy for me to take it um, to practice on it because it would go to the bin anyway so let's just before i start showing you how to do it um how to prime your line without any bubbles in it I want to just emphasize uh, two minutes on the risks of uh, bubbles going into your patient systems and what they can cause. So if you are using your IVC line, which is your venous axis, or if you're using your peak line, which is your arterial axis, it can cause venous air embolism or arterial air embolism, which means the bubbles can go um, through your venous system, through your veins in your body, or through your arteries arteries usually is more quicker way and it will reach your heart faster but saying that still if the air going through your venous system it can still cause some problems what types of problems it can cause if they travel to your lungs they can cause respiratory failure if they travel to your heart they can cause a heart attack and if they try travel to your brain they can cause a stroke they say that the amount of the bubbles matter, anything um, above 150 cc may be fatal, but you don't want any bubbles, if possible, to travel into your patient's system. Especially if your patient has two accesses, for example, they have two IVCs, we have conditions that my patients are presented when they uh, need to have a continuous IV fluids to hydrate them or they might have a um, couple of different medications given at the same time. So we might be using two arms with two different accesses to give those medications. And if you are not careful enough and you're letting the bubbles go in from two sides, that just adds up of the amount of bubbles going into your patient system. And if you remember that very terrible situation that happened in UK was that um, uh, Pete's nurse who was looking after I think it, she was neonatal actually care nurse who was looking after uh, newborn babies. One of the ways that she uh, sadly killed some of the babies or caused very bad complication is just inserting the air into the venous system. Um, so this is very dangerous, okay, and as I said, can be fatal. So now let me show you what I've been taught when I was a student. It was one of my facilitators who showed me this trick and it works every single time. So let's start. Okay guys, so we will start by opening this pack. So you have a tearing point or like a joint point like this from the side. We will open it up and before you attach this to your sodium chloride bag, so this is the trick that you need to do. You close this clap in here, you just clap it like this and you also close your clap in at the bottom you scroll it all the way to the other end okay so this has tightened up your tube here your line and it has tightened up your line here as well okay so now you have two clappings are closed you have this cap here on the top of your uh, chamber so you take your bag and you will need to open this part so you just twist it okay you just twist it, you put it away, that goes into the bin. 
you take this cap off i usually try not to touch this it's not like a sterile sterile procedure but i don't touch that uh part and you put it all the way in by just screwing it and twisting it like that make sure that it's all in like that let me just show you you see how it's all in okay now once it's all in you hang usually your bag onto one of the hooks that we have in a drug room so it's easier but for the purpose of this video i'm just gonna hold it in my hand i'm just gonna untangle my line everywhere okay and now you need to bring a bit of fluid into your chamber so by squeezing it like that you will bring about half of the chamber you will fill up with fluid about half like this okay and now i'm just gonna use this bag hold on i'm just gonna use this bag so i could drip in it okay you slowly open this one here okay you open it up and then this one here you start slowly to open i'm gonna bring the bag so you could see you start slowly opening it let the fluid go i'm gonna go back I open it fully right now and it's going there we go I'm gonna bring it down a little bit it's hard to do it at home because at the hospital we have it all the way up okay guys it's all done i'm gonna show you now so as you can see i did not pause the video or anything i have like a little job little drop of fluid there like i didn't waste pretty much anything and i will show you how my line looks like okay guys look at my line you see i'll show you all the way now look at my line guys it has no bubbles very important to not to have any bubbles in this section here because this part goes into the pump machine okay you see how nice and clean it is you see there is a little little one here like little little one there we go that's it easy peasy so your rule is to close this part here before you fill in the half of the chamber you close this part here and then the bottom one and then you fill in the half of the chamber then you open this one and slowly start to unscrew this one okay this way you don't waste a lot of product but also my suggestion to you if you are prepping any type of medication make sure to prep your line first because it's cheaper to waste a little bit more of uh, sodium chloride which is your normal silane than wasting the product already mixed and put in into this bag which will be your medication because in this case then you are wasting already pre-mixed solution into the bin if you are not experienced 
of how to prime your line with uh, without bubbles in it and less elimination of the product okay so my suggestion always prime the line first with the normal saline if it's a type of medication that will be mixed with normal saline do your medication prep um, on a side and then when it's primed then you would put your medication here so the medication goes into this port remember to alcohol swap this port because you don't want to bring any germs in so alcohol swap it and then using the needle uh, push in your medication inside so that's pretty much easy way for you guys to um, prime the line some people also find it effective to do this so instead of clapping this part here they just tilt tint it here like that like this so just tint it here like this then fill in the chamber and then you will still have the bottom clamp uh, closed and then slowly release it and then unscroll your uh, thingy for me I find that uh, way is not effective as the one that I just showed you here. Sometimes opening this part here helps as well, letting some air in for some type of medications or for albumin. And when you're giving albumin to your patients, it's a little bit thicker consistency product. And uh, at times I find opening this uh, section here is better to let a little bit of air out and then le let in and out. And then the product will go more faster because albumin usually goes very slow. You rarely will have bubbles with it because it's thicker, but still it goes very slow on a line and opening um, the air sac is helping for it to go down faster so i hope this video was helpful for you guys if you do enjoy something like that let me know and i will see what i can do what materials i can source for you guys to prep uh, similar videos if you want to discuss if you want me to discuss any other topics let me know as well just put your ideas into comment section below and i will see what i can prep for you according to my knowledge and my abilities um, if you have ways how to prime the line um, without bubbles, um, share your ideas as well. We will all read it and just, um, you know, educate ourselves. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next videos. Bye!